Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for October 1st through 7th. This week I read five books, I watched three shows, and I listened to one book. First this week I read Geekarella by Ashley Posen. This is a Cinderella retelling that has a significant portion of the plot tied up at a convention, and since I went to a convention this weekend, I thought it was a great book to bring along. There's a split narration between Elle, our hard-working teenager with a crappy home life with a secret online life, and Darian, the teenage actor just cast to be the lead in the reboot of his favorite space franchise. Since he's only worked on teen dramas before, which feature his abs about as much as his acting, there's a huge part of the fandom that says he can't pull off this role. No one knows about his secret nerdy side either, as his father turned manager says it would be bad for his image. I thought it was a cute story, and if fairy tale retellings appeal to you, especially if you want a love letter to fandom, because this one mentions so many fandoms. This book is for you. There's also a sneaky lady romance in there too. Next this week, I finished Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. This was a buddy read with a friend of mine, and we are going to have a much more in-depth video about it on her channel. But let me just say I loved this book. We start with Ramona, a lesbian in a small southern town who met a girl who's in the closet over summer break and is dealing with being a long distance secret. One morning, Ramona finds out that a childhood friend has moved to town and he urges her to come swimming with him because he misses being on a school swim team. Ramona's life is busy between working multiple jobs, taking care of her pregnant sister, and keeping the peace with the mother that ran out on them. Her dad works so much that they barely see each other and swimming laps next to Freddy is basically the only time she gets to herself. This book deals with sexuality, loyalty, and friendship, so look forward to a video of Paige and I gushing about it in the future. Continuing on the unintentional but I'm not mad about it lesbian train, next I read Snapshots of a Girl by Belden Sesson. I picked this up for the Get Graphic Readathon as it fulfilled the challenge of reading a book that's completely in black and white, and it turns out that it's an autobiographical account of coming out in Germany and the Netherlands in the 1980s. Belden talks about falling in love with an older woman when she's in her teens, going to bed with her, having weird experience that sent her into the closet long enough to date five men, even though she had no interest in them. This really did feel like doodles from one's lifetime, so if you want a linear story with a lot of detail, this might not appeal. But you could probably guess that from the title. The next two comics, also for Get Graphic, were American Vampire Volumes 1 and 2 by Scott Snyder, Stephen King, and Raphael Albuquerque. If you saw my Get Graphic TBR video, you know these were not in it. I had originally picked up 21st Century Boys Volume 1 and 2 for the challenges of read a new to you series and read two books in a series, but it turns out there's about a 50 year backstory before this series starts, and I couldn't follow the characters, so I made a swap for these volumes. The biggest aim of this project was to make vampires scary again after their time as glittery brooding pretty boys, and this definitely did that. This series plays with what the new versions of vampires can do, as each new vamp is an evolution. There's lots of jumping around in timelines, which is smart because there's times where the vamps are trapped for years and that would be really boring to watch. If you want a little horror in your life, try this series. This week in Grey's Anatomy, I watched the entire 13th season because it finally came to Canadian Netflix. If you watch my Geek Girl Con vlog, you know that I watched some of it in Seattle because watching a show where it takes place brings me great joy. Earlier this year I watched the first 12 seasons over three months and I really missed these characters. As is normal for this show, there is tragedy, growth, and emotionally heightened situations, and I can't believe I now have to wait for the next season. I have so many questions and so many of them are season 13 spoilers, so I'm just looking for what else Shonda Rhimes has in store for us, even though I heard that the next season is going to focus more on the comedy of the show, which makes me scared that we'll cross too far into Scrubs territory. Also, I really miss Callie. On the ferry to and from Seattle, I watched the first half of the fifth season of Orange is the New Black. I took quite a break from the show given how upset I was about the death of a specific character, but this entire season so far is focused around that death. I think what I enjoy most in this show is the character dynamics. And when we get a new backstory out of the blue, because that used to be how most of the episodes were centered. And now it's like a small treat. Between Nichols and Boo and a new love interest for Arizona, TV has definitely not let me down on the lesbian front. This week, anyway. This week I also watched Survivor. This show would never reveal that it had lesbians on the show unless they could play cheesy music over it and make it a memorable moment for the season recap reels. So, you know, maybe this will qualify the show for my unintentional week of lesbian entertainment. But at this point, it's more likely that Survivor is off in a corner with American Vampires, which is a reality show mashup I'm sure someone has made a fan fiction for. As for the actual content of this episode, though, I don't really remember much. I haven't grown attached to any of the castaways as of yet. This week, I listened to Orphan Number 8 by Kim Van Alkemade. This book opens on an event that left two children parentless, and flashes back and forth between our protagonist Rachel as a youth and as an adult. This book takes place between 1919 and post-World War II, and deals with child abuse, sexual assault, and disfiguration. 
Raised in a home for Hebrew orphans, Rachel shows aptitude as a nurse, which is her profession in the adult chapters. In this timeline, an elderly Dr. Mildred Solomon has been admitted to the old Hebrew's home, and Rachel remembers her from shortly after she became an orphan. Looking into their past together, Rachel realizes that she was used in experiments. In the youth timeline, we see Rachel finds her sexuality, which leads to her living with a roommate in the adult chapters and how upset she is by the fact that they have to keep this secretive. The best thing about this audiobook was that it had two narrators, one for younger Rachel and one for older. Although their voices weren't drastically different, it felt like a good choice to separate these chapters this way. So yes, out of the nine entertainment sources I consumed this week, six featured lesbians as well as other queer characters, and it was all a happy accident. That's it for this week. If you've got a queer reading recommendation for me, leave it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like share this as you see fit, and I will see you next time. Bye!